Woo! We're live. I've literally just ran into the door. I ran into the door. Yeah, I was like, that. Ah. Ran past the missus. She tried to give me a kiss. I was like, hand off. Get out of the way. Got to see the boys. Got to get involved in another episode of the Transfer Exchange Show, the review. And that's for you guys. Yes. How are how are you doing? How is everyone? Excited the season's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and this this is this is what you call a football fan, people. Uh who <laughs> up first? We've got top right, we've got the chef. I don't know how he managed to get himself in that no. top right position next to me. Some would say he's the teacher's pet, but he's just working his way up the ladder. It's That's Simon. Bullshit. It's why it's Simon Powell. How are you doing, Simon? <laughs> Right. On the bottom right, some say he's got a new camera. <laughs> he's looking sharp. He's sounding good. And when you look good, you feel good. And you play good. It's Steve K. Yeah. How are you doing, Steve? Hello, mate. I always look good. What are you talking about? <laughs> Get out of it. And it's <laughs> bottom right. Is that a new hat I see there? No, same man. Yeah. No, not you. Not you, Steve. It's not all about <laughs> all you. Right. Bloody hell. You're Bloody hell. Right. Bloody hell. Huh? Yeah, go, yeah. go on, go on, Jerome. It's your turn. Yeah, it's a new tip for. <laughs> new tip for that. <laughs> well, Jerome, Jerome yeah. don't normally wear a hat, does he? <laughs> no? Exactly. Exactly. We know when you've got a new hat, Steve. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we would know. Viewers would be put, writing in messages. Is that a new hat from Steve? Where'd you get that from? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? All right, today today is going to have a very Italian feel. It's going to be classy. It's going to have charisma. And, uh, yeah, it's going to have three teams from uh, from the Italian league, Serie A. First up, I've got not got none of my fancy ones today. I didn't have time, people. But keep your eyes on the prize. First up, Ralph Ragnick was meant to take over from AC Milan, as AC Milan manager and technical director. But there was a dramatic ch- uh, U-turn, and they've given the job to Stefano Pioli. But what happened? What what was the, I was singing the guy's praises every day. I was saying every time I hear this man speak about about AC Milan and what he's going to do, it makes me it makes me more and more impressed with him. In fact, I said the words, "He's a he's about to wake up a sleeping giant." But is this sleeping giant gonna, gonna gonna wake up? Was this the right move for them? Let's start off with you, Steve. I know I, I, I de- we, we spoke about it the other day, so I'm, I'm going to start with you, mate. Go on. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what they're doing. I really, I really don't know what they're doing. They they had this. They had really had this this excellent chance of uh, getting in this new modern guy with new modern ways. Who's been a success wherever he's gone, and they've stuck with the old, the old guard, and uh, probably the worst thing that could have ever happened to him was Ibrahimovic scoring two goals against the studio. It sounds like Phil Collins's team, doesn't it? Sassudio, 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 because now their manager wants to sign him up on a two-year contract at thirty-nine years old. Um, and Brimovich is once uh, six million a year. Um, <laughs> it's I'd, I'm 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 really I, I'm absolutely baffled by what what they're doing. What they're doing. Every everybody around them is going uh, the modern way. Insa, uh, you think, you know they're all going the, the modern way. Um, for me, they're just they're just going backwards. Um, Baffling, baffling, absolutely baffling decision. Uh, as I say, he's already falling out with Gazidis um, because he wants to keep all the old guard. Um, I, I think it's a terrible decision. It's terrible. Uh, uh, sorry, um, Steve just touched on, upon the the Gazidis fallout. Um, I know you wasn't Gazidis' biggest fan. Does it look like he's changed much when he since he's gone to AC Milan? Nope. Still a third, and he's doing it exactly how he did it at Arsenal. Difference is, though, Arsene Wenger isn't there, who has pretty much been at Arsenal longer than he has. And then the mm. thing with Ivan Gazidis, he likes to be a bit like what Ralph Sinelli is for us. 
He likes to hold all the cards. He wants to make all the decisions. He wants to uh, basically have the last word in everything. When, as a businessman, he's poor. He's absolutely shocking. He turns, he turns the board against each other until it favours him, because that's what he did with Arsenal. And the thing with Meldini, when he came in, Meldini came in to actually fix the mess that Ivan Gazidis made. And as soon as Gazidis knew his nose was getting pushed out of joint, that was it. Meldini, gone. Literally, just gone. Mm -hmm. And I think with um, Ralph Radnick, he would have come in and he would have gone, right, I want this player, I want him gone. He's not getting that contract. We're running the team like this. I, des I say what happens at this club. And then mm -hmm. Ivan Gazidis would be his little lap dog. Nah, he don't like that. He hates that. Mm -hmm. And Arsenal fans have told him that for so many years. Yeah, he's all right at bringing in a commercial deal and stuff like that. He brought in two very good deals for Arsenal in his whole time. And that was Puma and uh, the uh, drink that, that we, uh, we brought in. They're the only two that he ever did. The rest of them... We're an absolute shoddy, uh, absolute nightmare of deals. For me, is is an absolute fraud. And I think everyone at AC Milan, the real people at AC Milan, know that he's a fraud. But mm. while he's got this power and dictates what's happening, nobody can tell him otherwise, basically. Mm. He's like a five-year-old with a sheriff's badge. Thinks <laughs> he's in control of everything until someone comes in who knows what they're doing and trying to fix the mess. And if he knows it's not going right for him, go, goodbye, you're gone. Watch mm -hmm. watch Latan get the money he wants. Watch players now walk mm. all over AC Milan. They're nowhere mm. near getting back to the best. Yeah, this is fantastic. The... This is fantastic news for Napoli, Juventus, <clears> who have pretty much run away with it. And then Inter Milan. Inter Milan will love this. Yeah, um, Simon. Simon said last week. Simon said last week that. Uh, that don't um, call me out. He could, no, 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 not at all. Total, total opposite. That you that you couldn't see um, a way forward, and I and I went the other way because of Rag Ragnick, and I said that uh, no, they they will because this is this is AC Milan. Um, mm. but, but now it's not. It's not because now they've just they're just keeping to the old guard with the old ways. Doing the old thing because it's the old lady. And, sorry, not the old lady, is it? But um, and the Rossoneri. That's Ross. That's it. The Rossoneri. That's it. And uh, yeah, and I just agree with Simon there that, that, that they're just going to, if anything, be round no, six or seven. You've got you've got teams like Atalanta now who will who will surpass them. Yeah, yeah they will. Mm. Jerome. Um, Piola's done a really good job since he's come in. Do you think that they, 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 because the fans were starting to make noises, why, why are you making this change? He's coming, he's doing a good job. Do you think, do you think they had any influence? Do you think they've made the right decision? I think it's, um, by, by all accounts, it's sort of a, a knee jerk reaction, keeping the current manager. They've had a good few results recently. Um, and um, Radnick's agents come out and said it's just been bad timing. And by that, I think he means the timing of their recent results has has uh, has made has has uh, has meant that he's not taking over them now. Yeah. Um, and so they're not really they're not really as far as I'm aware they're not looking at sort of the bigger picture um, mm. because they had him lined up. They obviously you know thought a lot of him and and it's now it's not going to happen. So um, it's I think it's a case of the recent results as has meant that this is now the case yeah uh, and and that, that when you when you get in uh an interim managing these things usually happen these things tend mm. to happen um i was reading a little bit into it and um one of one of the people that were writing about it they said one of the reasons why there's been such an uprise in the mentality and and, and the feeling around the squad is um Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He's instilled uh, a professionalism around with the young players. He's kicked some of the older players into shape, and he just he just brings better stands to the team. And maybe that's why your Steve was saying he's been offered another a two year extension on his contract, which in part would sound crazy, and in another part maybe the manager actually realizes that 
a big influence in what has made a, a, the turnaround of the team is Ibrahimovic. But in the long run, how, how, is, how is that going to help the team? You're talking about a guy that was looking to come in and completely uproot whatever was going on at the moment, get rid of any of the badness around and start from scratch. A clean slate is what they said. But yeah. this doesn't seem the right way. I know, Steve, you was reading before about the there was there was dramas with um, Maldini at first, but yeah. then uh, Ragnick wanted Maldini in, in there as well. Brad, Brad, Brad Dent wanted the fresh new you know, approach of turning AC Milan into, because at the moment, then, they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, at that old, you know, they're not going to do anything level. Uh, mm. and, and, and bringing Ragnick in, um, you know, I, I I see his interview, I, I, I read a good um, uh, interview that you give to someone on Semper Milan. Uh, and, it, and if you read, read it, I mean, it, it was very similar to when Arteta came in on his first speech and you got all excited. And if you was an AC Milan fan, mm. you you would have been like, wow, do you know, you would have got so excited. But I've had a, I've had a word with some AC Milan fans um, and, and they want it the old way. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do, don't, didn't they? They don't, they don't want, want change. change. They, don't they don't want, want change. change. They don't want change. They don't want a new way. They want him with Vooch. They don't want Ragnick. They want um, so I've pronounced it properly. Uh, pill roll, uh, they want him, and and when I, the ones I spoke to are like, look to, to me as if to say, What you know, what you're talking about, we'll be all right, but they're not going to be all right, they're not, they're yeah. not. You just, you just, you just, I don't know, you, you're not stripping up the old paint, you're not taking off the old wallpaper, you're just no. painting over the top, and the cracks are going to come. The cracks are going to uh, be seen. The 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 ethos, the 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 mantra that um, was coming in under under the new regime, it was it was fresh. Even the new players that were coming in. If you look at the teams that he was involved with before, it's all of an age. You're buying uh, young players, up and coming players, and you'll have experienced players there just just for the assistance. Not like it's. It, it, it's a great approach. What what uh, uh, the the Red Bull approach is, um, mm. and if you're going to get at someone like AC Milan, I, I think you'd have you'd have that approach with a, with you'd have the balance because AC Milan would want that balance. And I just feel like, like you said, with these recent results, it's it's, it's no different to when previous managers came in and and, and they felt that they were going to do a job. So I don't know. It's like Arsene Wenger. It's like Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. All Arsenal fans, uh, a little bit, a little bit of me, not fully, but a little bit of me was actually quite scared and quite worried. What would happen? What would happen if Arsene Wenger left? What? Where mm -hmm. would we go? Would we go on to good heights? Yeah. Would we have a clear plan what we're doing? With AC Milan, they will regret keeping this manager mm. because yeah. their players now will basically get to a stage where they'll perform all right, but they'll not be worth the price tag and they'll not be worth the wages. Then they'll get lumbered with them. Then mm. the fans will start getting peed off. And you know what Italy's like. Jesus, says something and they'll just backhand you to Flua. Mm. So then basically, it's what it's going to be like is all them fans are going to be, well, no, we want it the old way. We don't want it the new way. We just want to keep things how we are. Well, we said that as Arsenal fans. And we've gone through Emery, Freddie, and now we've gone on Arteta. But mm. pretty much 90% of our fan base well, 80, because there's still 20% of the morons, like. But basically, they didn't want change. They wanted to keep Wenger when we knew we weren't going anywhere because they liked how things were. They wanted players just to sign contracts because they liked them players. And this is the thing. If you do not change and you do not evolve with uh, the times, you're just going to get washed away. And that's what AC Milan are going to experience. Mm. It's going to be a mm. horrible Horrible ten years for them, but their fans have asked for it. Yeah, but when, it's... but when, when they had, when they had the meeting, when they decided, are they going to go Pulio or are they going to go Ragnick? Mm. The, the the main reason why they they went with Pulio in the end was because of Ragnick wanted 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 to do the lot. The lot, yeah. Because mm. he wanted to do to do to do the lot, and I had a little thing with one of the fans who was saying to me, "Yeah, but when have you ever known?" a club where managers and coaches 
do the lot. And I had a thought about it, and I thought, well, yeah, he could, he, he's got me here because it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. But then again, I thought again, the two that have was Arsene Wenger, uh, who had control. Now, to be fair, all right, later on it went a bit screw with, but earlier on he had it spot on. Mm. And the only other one was Alex Ferguson, and they mm. didn't. So they didn't do bad, did they? Yeah, and 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 I wonder how much um, these votes were swung because they people felt their jobs were maybe in trouble. Um, although he wanted to keep Maldini, Maldini was a technical technical director, a job that he was going to be taking. Um, mm. When your technical director and manager, even Gazidis, hasn't got much say in that in that in the board meetings, um, mm. he'll have to wind his neck in a bit more. And mm. I actually wonder how long um, Ragnick would, was actually looking to do both jobs for. I, I feel personally it's a case of I want to go in, lay the foundations for it, and then I will step and take the te technical director's job and you'll bring in a manager eventually. Probably of his saying as well, or he'd have a say in it. But I don't know. I, I, I personally think it's a, it's a, it's a sideways step. It's, it's no offence to the manager that's doing a good job at the moment, but... I just feel like that's very short-term vision. Um, I must say, I did some research into this manager because I'd never even heard of him until we've done this. Was it weren't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I did some research into him and he would have been actually... When I said, I think AC Milan fans will regret it because they'll have too much control and they'll start arguing. I switch now on that. I'm not flip-flopping about like that. I said my piece and I know 100% now I got it wrong because he's like Arteta. He had a clear plan. He had a clear vision. He knew exactly where he wanted to sit at the club. He knows what players he wanted. He knows what players he didn't want. He knew what he wanted on his board. He knew how to please the fans. He listened to the fans and even took on board and picked out players that they talked about and actually mm -hmm. did research on them players. Mm. He would have been fantastic for AC Milan, but they've gone and ruined it for themselves. Yeah. And, and, what's and what's Pirlo's first job he's done? He's go up to the gazette this is say, I want to. I want to give um, Brimovich another six million a year <laughs> on a two-year contract. Yeah, that's, stupid, that's, ludicrous, that's ridiculous. And this is a guy who turned around and said himself that he doesn't feel like he's got. He's, he's up to playing in the Europa League anymore. So it's like, us, it's like us giving Ozil a new contract next this summer. <laughs> but you go, you've got five hundred now. You've got five hundred a week. You just yeah. be an idiot to do it. But and Ivan Gazidis is the idiot to do it. And, mm. and AC Milan fans, you worried about uh, Ragnick? He actually got interviewed for the Man United job. Uh, he yeah. might not have got it, but th they t they 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 were the willing to, to to listen to what he had to say. So he was, he was no even mug. in the running as well for Manchester City's job after he was, Pellegrini. He was no he was no mug. Um, next up, a name we will know close closely, very closely. His name is Mauricio Pochettino, and apparently. Juve had talks with him literally a couple of days before Siri almost, almost put sign, seal, deliver on the Serie A title. What's going on? How can you be... Uh, Michel Sally, Sarri is just about to win the league and they're talking to Pochettino. Huh? What, what, why don't people like him? Jerome, what, what, what do you think it is with... Um, with uh, Sarri, is, is he blowing too many, too much cigarette smoke in people's faces? Do you think it is? Yeah, he. I think it, I can't it's hear just his like the and the what way he saying? comes across. Huh? <laughs> I can't hear him. <laughs> I can hear him. I can, can hear him. Jerome. <laughs> yeah, Jerome. Hello, I can hello. hear you. Carry on, mate. Yeah. 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 No, I think as I was saying, I think it's just his um, just his demeanour, just the way he comes across. Um. Just the, the type of character he is. Mm -hmm. I think he's not the sort of modern modern manager, is he? And maybe Juventus are trying to look for someone that is, you know, maybe a bit younger, a bit fresher. Um, and I guess Pochettino maybe fits the bill for them. But um, Juventus's directors come out and said that Sari will definitely be there next season. Mm. So, um, you know, I suppose you, sometimes you can't read too much into these things. But um, yeah, yeah. It's He's, he's, he's done a good job, but I mean, even at Chelsea, when th th this is a man who, who won two trophies in his short time there, yet th the Chelsea fans weren't too keen on him. Yeah, I just don't think he's a he's a likable character. I think, yeah, that's, think, what, I think that's what it is, yeah. 
Uh, Steve, Steve, why is it people don't like Sarri? Was there anything in the potch? Were they speaking to? I, I, I have no idea. I, I mean, I've, I've heard that um, Sarri um, has been told that he's not wanted there. Um, I've been told that there's a mutual agreement that he's going to go for Pochettino um, and that Sarri don't want to be there anyway and he's fed up. Um, um, I mean, I don't know if he's they've taken away his no smoking room and give it to Ronaldo's <laughs> baby to a playroom or something and he's got the ump. But he's, um, I don't know, he wanted, he wanted to go there to be with his parents, didn't he? Um, um, I, I, I mean, over well, he's, he's done well since taking over at the, uh, the, the oh God, the Bionicori, isn't it? <laughs> you know, he's taken them to the to the top of the table, um, five points clear. Uh, with, with Atlanta sitting second, who are a very good side. Um, but um, you know, he started to use excuses, um, like he was at Chelsea. But he's, I mean, he's done well there. I mean, he's he's he's, he's been there. He's, he's had fifty three games. He's one thirty four, drawn eleven, lost eight. I mean, that ain't bad. Um, is he not modern enough? Is he not? Um, the, 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 that that could be only thing. I mean, the only thing I, as I say that what I've heard is a, a, a mutual consent thing where he wants to. He just wants to go now, and he's he's fed up. The fans are on his back. But I don't know what he's done wrong. I really don't know what he's done wrong. And it was the same at Chelsea. The Chelsea fans were on his back every single game. Get him out. Get Sarri out. And we always, you know, we must remember. We always say, "What's what he's done? He's done all right. You know, he's yeah. done this. He's done that. He's, you know, he's won the FA Cup. He's, he's in the Europa League. What's he done wrong? But he, he was looks upon as this like uh, antichrist, weren't he? Yeah. Um, sorry, ball. They called it sorry, ball. Sorry, oh, God, don't get me started. Ball. What is that? What is that? <laughs> don't get, don't get me started. I, 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 what was it? Simon? What made sorry, ball, sorry, ball? What, what is it that nobody liked about it? What is it that Chelsea fans didn't like, and now Juventus fans aren't happy with? Oh, come on! This is Chelsea fans, for God's sake! I can't believe how bad they treated Sarri. Literally, called him when he was first started the season, and he was the manager of Chelsea. It was all going brilliant. The first few games of the season, fireworks are going off, magic socks are everywhere. They're <laughs> gonna win they're gonna win the league, they're gonna do this. And then all of a sudden Hazard's gonna get the he's gonna get the best out of Hazard. Then all of a sudden, they're basically with Chelsea team, they just stopped because it got too tough for them. And Antonio Conte has said this as well. That Chelsea team that those two uh, managers had, it got too tough for them. With Sarri, he wants you, as soon as you lose the ball, to hunt it in packs. He wants you to press the defence mm. and force them mm. into mistakes. A bit like what Arteta wants with Arsenal's yeah. front line. He wants you to command the midfield. He wants you to do all these little 500 passes and then score a goal. You're not going to do that in the Premier League. But in Serie A, with Juventus, you can do that blindfolded with players that they've got. So mm. the thing with Sarri, and what I've been told because I've been speaking to someone close to Juventus and these, this person's told me that Savi wants out of Juventus, mm. a bit like what um, Steve says, yeah. and that Pochettino isn't their first choice. They want mm. somebody else, but this person, no other manager, wants to be the manager of Juventus. Mm. And Pochettino now is getting desperate because not many teams want him. Well, it's... Does it's, it's, it's more- there's the even been stop? talks. There's even been talks. What this person's told me that Daniel Levy has been in touch with Maurizio again and wanted him to take over from Mourinho. Mm. I mean, would Pochettino's style suit Juventus? I mean, he don't strike me as the type of manager who would go into Juventus and say, "Right, we're going to play like this," because Juventus like playing a certain style in a certain way. I mean, yeah. the, way when he, the way he was manager at Spurs, Southampton, and then you do Juventus, they're totally different totally ways different. to play. So it didn't, it didn't surprise me then when Simon said they're looking at someone else because yeah. the, the styles of play don't, don't fit. I mean, fair enough. If, and sorry, it's getting whatever, whatever he's doing, 
he's, I think he's doing well. I mean, Ronaldo scored 36 goals this season. Dybala's got 17. The Green 11. I've got Ramsey 4. Benucci 4. De Ligt 4. It's all over the pitch. Cabrado 3. So, he is playing Sari Ball. So I don't even know what Sari Ball is. I've forgotten what it was. But whatever he's doing, he's doing right. But they want him out. And in the top of the league. I just feel sorry for him, B. I really do feel sorry for him yeah. because he's he's obviously gone there and won the league. He got Chelsea into the Champions League spot. It'd be us in the Europa League final, convincingly. And then they had the cheek. And then same as goalkeeper, Kepper, when he's there saying to his mm. own manager, I'm not coming off, I'm not coming off, I'm mm. staying on. Yeah, that, that strikes me as the. There's no the, respect. The, that There's no strikes respect me for as him. The, 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 yeah, the players would lose respect for him. Even even former Juventus legend Del Piero said the fans need balance. They need to think about because they're comparing him to Allegri, and they're saying, but Allegri had a completely different strike force. Allegri's mm. strike force had more work rate, had more pace in them, had more like they were a bit of a they were a different entity compared to what they've got now. Right now they've got they've got like an an aging. Uh, Ronaldo, they've got a, a Hake Wayne who's coming to the end of his career, and then they've got Dubai. Like, it's, it's, it's a, a little bit of a mismatch. It's worked, but it's mismatched. Before they had Manzukic, who was a higher press, a hard worker, and, and, and they worked with them. They had a different front line, and that's what you've got to understand. So, I don't know. I think, I think, I think Sari's been a bit harshly done by, but yeah. The, the, the fact what you said there where he said he's held up his hands and he said look I want out I can't bother with this it's exactly what he did at Chelsea he turned mm. around and said because I remember Louis telling me he turned around and said once once the uh, the board said look you've got no you've got no um, transfer windows he was like do you know what nah I don't really fancy it so it seems when it comes to Sarri a bit like what he did with Kepa when it gets a bit tough like that it's like <sighs> The light up one and do one. So I think uh, I think there is something in the story. Maybe maybe Poch might not be the man, but there could potentially be a new manager at Juventus next season, no matter what the president said. Because I think that mm. might be to bring a bit of stability. Next up, next up. They're creeping up on the old lady they call Juventus. It's the black and blue of Inter Milan. And it's Antonio Conti. What a season he's had. This had its ups, it had its downs. They lost to Slavia Prague, which was a bit of a downer. They're a, they're not the same, but they've got our man Adam Holzek as uh, a <laughs> player for him. But, um, but the they next still Messi, lost. the next Messi, but they still <laughs> lost to the Minos. They lost to the Minos from Czech. But what next for Inter Milan? Can they win it next season? They've already bought Hakimi. We're going to start with you, Jerome, just 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 purely because I know how much you like Hakimi. I know how much you wanted him to side for your team, Arsenal. He went he went to Inter Milan. <laughs> he went to Inter Milan. And what what kind of a player is he? How good do you reckon he'd be in Syria? Al? They've they've had an absolute result signing this player into Milan, um, and you got a fancy that the manager Conte will get the best out of him as well. Yeah. Um, so it's just a proper modern day strong, quick, athletic fullback. Um, I'm so I'm so surprised Madrid let him go, even mm. though they got quite a bit of money for him. You, good, you know, good players like that. You you got to try and keep them. Mm. Um, they're a bit of a funny one into Milan because they've they've got some excellent players, but defensively they've got Godin, who's he's about fifty eight. Um, <laughs> But he's still, but he's still putting in like quality performances. Um, they've obviously signed a few players from the Premier League recently. You know, they've signed uh, Ashley Young, uh, Ericsson, Moses. There's talk of them um, possibly doing another loan deal for Sanchez from United. Um, but sort of talking about Sari and now talking about Conte. Conte is a manager that you know, if you've got him in your corner, you fancy, you know, you fancy yourselves. So, depending on who, obviously, like you said, they've already bought in Akimi. If they can sign a couple more quality players, then they'll really give Juventus a run for their money because they, they haven't been too far behind this year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if Sari leaves Juventus and it might take a new manager a bit of a while to implement their, his new ideas, and Juventus have got a bit of an ageing squad as well, then, yeah, Inter Milan are, um, yeah, might not be too far behind next season as well. Yeah, and Conte's one to... Uh... Not rest on his laurels and sit on his hands. He um, 
What if he sees a problem, he gets it fixed, doesn't he? Yeah, he demands. He demands a lot, doesn't he? He does. He does. Yeah. Um, Simon, what, what do you think Inter Milan's chances of doing doing some big things next season are in, in Italy, or even in even Europe? Um, is it Champions League or Europa League that they're in? They're in Champions League, aren't they? They'll be in Champions League. They're the second Champions spot at the so moment. They're like so they'll be in Champions behind. League. Well, like Jerome says, with uh, Akibi, that's that's a fantastic sign in that. I think I, I think Conte is going to get the absolute best out of that guy. Yeah. And then, Alex, if you look at Alexis Sanchez now, I've been watching Inter a few Recently. times. Uh, Alexis Sanchez is actually getting back to what he used to. Mm. You, mm. You're not going to see that Alexis that he got for Arsenal because of his age and that. But he's still he can still do a fair bit of stuff. Mm. And then you've got Lukaku as well, who's smashing it over there. I think yeah. they could do with they could do with another midfielder, yeah, basically. They, they could do with another midfielder and probably a new right back because I know that they've got Ashley Young over there, but he's not going to start tearing trees up over there. <laughs> but I just think we're into Milan. It'll be interesting to see what they do in the Champions League. Mm. But they could really, really press Juventus. But the thing with Conte, when he goes into a new he goes into a new team and he gets what he wants, or he's got to find what he wants, he goes through so much changing and winds up players and stuff like that. Like when he won the league with Chelsea, he kept playing a four at the back, then a three at the back, then he moved to a four at the back, and then he carried on with four at the back, and then he played us with four at the back, and he got absolutely demolished by um, Ozil and Sanchez, ironically. And then he mm. moved to a back three, but with four in midfield and three up top, because he used to play two strikers and one behind. Now he plays with two wingers and one striker. Mm. He gets the best out of what team he needs and what system. But his, his man management for me, Conte, it's not that great, it's my management. It's, it's not, not that good. People, no. you say that and people go, what? Watch. Just watch. Just because he won the league doesn't mean that he did it through just being a brilliant manager. He just worked out what players fit a better with system. It's like, once again, Arteta. Our, our centre-backs are crap. They're all rubbish. So what do you do with centre-backs? You can't play two. You play three instead basically, and you put your best centre-back in the middle with two protecting on each side. Then he's got his midfield and then he's got his front three. So, with Conte, I don't see him doing anything next season with Inter. I see him still finishing second, mm -hmm. but I'll be... It's an achievement for him if it's more, not more than 10 points behind Juve. Yeah, he's, a very, he's a very tactically astute manager. Uh, very good. Knows what he's doing. His man management side might not be great, but he gets results, he gets the wins, he gets the trophies. Steve, what do you think in his chances are next season of uh, winning the Serie A title? Yeah, I think they're big time contenders. Whether they'll win it or not is uh, another thing. But as, as far, Antonio Conte, wherever he goes, uh, he wins trophies. Mm. And... Um, I think they've they've got the you know they've got the right man. I mean, and not only that, they've, he's already won the Serie A three times already, um, and obviously the Premier League once. He's building the side there. He's he's he's, he's got a few um, you know old players there, um, but he's you know with I mean Martinez. I don't know what's happening with him. Uh, Lukaku. They've got Christian Eriksen there. Um, Sanchez, like Simon said, is um, I, I took the eye off Sanchez a little bit, but you know he's improving a lot. He's picked um, up, yeah, and and obviously the the one the, the player that I love from Inter Milan, the the young wonder kid, uh, Sebastian Espinosa, who would be great for the future, um, and uh, Stefano Sensi, who's another excellent um, player they got. Um, yeah, it's a shame about Ashley Young. <laughs> but but he's, he's doing really well going forward. It's just yeah, the back. He's just, it's just, he's a bit of a liability at the he's back. He's always That's been the that, hasn't he? Yeah. But they've also, they've been, they've also, they've been linked to a lot of players. Um, yeah. Gabby Magulez, again, he, he's been linked to Winter. Yeah. Um, um, Martinez, 
I mean, I'm hearing Man City want Martinez there. So, um, but I'm also hearing a go low county, um, yeah, as being linked with Inter Milan, um, and also Martial, um, because he's he's still not settling in at Manchester United. I've been told. Um, That's a long settle. I think if he ain't settled in now, Steve, I don't think he's going to, yeah, you know. Yeah, so there could be a, a sort of a, a swap either going with him. And again, I said Ericsson, I mean, great player on his day, but uh, he's, he's, he's on the verge of leaving. Um, he's not settling, is he? No, he's being Ericsson. found out, Tim. He's being found he's not, out, Tim. I just, I just think the league's not, not suited to him. Um, yeah. And he's got to have the right players around him. And uh, like, like you said, Conte's not going to. Build a team around around Christian Eriksen, is he? Yeah. Uh, and, so the, and, think... and, and, and the other last player that they've been linked with is that Mikel Skinner. Is is another one that they've been linked with. So I think you'll find that they're gonna there's gonna be quite a few players, different players in their squad next season. And 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 they already had talks with Sanjo Tonelli, as a, as we mentioned about about four or five weeks ago. Um, they've mm-hmm. already had talks with the Breska Central midfielder. Uh, he's he's labelled the next whatever, Perlo, whatever you want to call him, he's going to be an absolute machine, this kid. Um, plays as a, as a holding midfielder, deep line creative. He's a bit more than just a defensive midfielder. Really, if you're not seeing him, go and check him out. They've already held talks with him. Um, Brescia uh, were negotiating with Inter Milan. I fully expect him to be there next season. He wants to go. They want him. It's, uh, I just, it's just a, a case of negotiating the press. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Next up, we have... The Golden Boys. We're gonna get. We're gonna have one each today, boys. Because after that, we're going to the transfer roundup. All right. <laughs> First up, it's Simon Powell, the chef. I've given you a good one this week, Sire. I know uh, exclusive. I am. It's not a rubbish defender. <laughs> no, I am. I felt so bad last week. He's like, you gave me three defenders. I was like, did I? So <laughs> pick them out of a hat. God, what you got, Sire? I have uh, I've got FC Porto attacker uh, Fabian. Uh, I forgot his other name now. Damn, we've had Fabio to rush this because you were late. That's the Fabio, one. Fabio Sil- Silva. Fabio Silva, very good player actually. Really good player. Centre forward, eighteen years old. Uh, played twelve games, uh, one goal, zero assists. But uh, he's not much. He's not much of an assister. He's more like a creator. You know, like that pre-assist. Is mm-hmm. he always is fantastic at holding the ball up? Is brilliant at finding space, drifting off into space. He can cross a ball. He gets back and defends. Is I think I think his strongest attribute is a second striker. Mm. Uh, I know his profile and what people have said about him is that he's a fantastic number nine. I think he's a better as a number ten, but not as a nozzle number ten, a Lacazette. Number ten, where Abamyang feeds off with Lacazette, if you get yeah. what I mean, is mm-hmm. is absolutely fantastic. He's already got um, he's got Lazio and he's got Benfica and Sporting Lisbon looking at him. So I don't know if that comes into the things what you've heard with rumours with Arsenal and Fernandez from Portugal. I've got no idea, but yeah, I, I just like his hold up play. B. I really like his hold up play. It looks like it looks right skinny, weak. Like you could just blow on him and he'd fall over, but he's not. He's actually quite strong. Yeah, he's really he's strong for a boy his age. Very highly regarded at Porto as well. Very highly. Yeah, regarded. he is really highly regarded. All right, thank you very much, Sai. Jerome, up next, who have you got for us this week? Right, I know I'm I'm going to be biased now because this is this is the one that I'm talking about. But this this player, Kieran, that you that, that we've had a look at, he's he is top. Top draw <laughs> is in the golden boy. And, Come and on, I'll tell you what. I've, I've only, only only watched a minute of him, and I thought, yeah, this this guy's quality. So yeah. he play he plays for PSV. He's an attacking midfielder. Oh, his yeah, name, yeah, yeah. His name is Mohamed Amin Ihataran. I've probably butchered the name. No, but, you've done well. You've done well there, Jerome. Um, he's he's pretty much already established himself as a regular this season for PSV. Um, he was linked with Man City and Chelsea um, sort of a few months back. He he reminds me a bit like Riyad Mahrez at Man City. Mm. His, the close control he's got, the way you... Although he, 
he does cut inside a lot. You you don't know what he's going to do. Um, I re I really think this guy is is going to move on from PSV and, and play for a big big team. He, he's been there the, his whole career, sort of from youth team level. He's been there since he was about ten or something. Uh, maybe maybe even a bit younger. Um, honestly, anyone go and have a look at this guy. He's got bags and bags of skill and ability. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I I hadn't really known anything about him to be honest. But what, what, once you watch him. For the first time, it, it, some players you need to watch for a bit to work out what they're about, and if you know if you think they're any good or not. But this guy, you watch watch him for a minute, and I think I think pe people automatically like him. Yeah, he oozes that confidence of like, uh, you know, that cocky, confident player. He just, you know, yeah. when he gets on the pitch, everyone wants to play with him because you know he's going to drop a skill, drop a shoulder, he sends a man, oh, yeah. like that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, no, he's. He's, he's, yeah. a, he's a true entertainer, um, yeah. and, and like like Jerome said, he's definitely definitely one to watch. Go and check him out, people. Uh, yeah. Steve, who have you got for us today? Uh, I've got a centre back. <laughs> um, his name's um, Lucero um, Getruda um, from Feyenoord. Uh, he's twenty years old. Um, I'd, I'd explain him as a modern day centre back, a modern day central defender. Um, He's, he's not only uh, an excellent uh, tackler, he reads the game um, perfectly. Uh, he's also a real a real threat in the opposition's penalty area um, with many goals due to his excellent, excellent heading ability. He's always, he must have get 10, 11 goals a season just, just from corners. Mm. Um, uh, but also on the ball, when he's on the ball, he, he turns into a more than capable midfielder. I suppose when you think about it, it's very similar to like a, a Rio Ferdinand type player, um, centre back, where he can come forward, bring it into midfield, play it off. He sprays it about perfectly. It's not unusual to see him spray 40 yard balls um, from one end of the pitch to the other. Uh, as I say, it's not uncommon in his game. Um, there's no there's no links from going into the, to anywhere. He's, he's under contract until 2022. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a good player. He's, he's definitely one to watch out on. Uh, as I say, a modern day centre back, uh, Lucerel Gertrude. It's a good one. Thank you. I don't think that much. one's floating in Steve's boat. So <laughs> he gets excited with these. <laughs> so it is. So it is. Because everyone wants a forward player now. Everyone wants a, no one wants a defender. Although we appreciate the defender, Austin Quebec's gone. The other ones are gone. Uh, Garcia is gone. Everyone just wants that striker. Everyone wants a skillful player to to, yeah. to assess for the week. Yeah. Well, That's I why I got so ex I got so excited over the forty yard ball. I was like, oh, like, look at that! <laughs> I, kept, I kept rewinding it back. I kept rewinding. Put that back again. <laughs> We're back again. <laughs> oh, this is good. That's probably why. That's probably why I said he keeps on spraying them. He probably only <laughs> done that. <laughs> 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 sad, and sad, sad. Well, this is the life we live now, Steve. This is the life we live. We wake up, we check out the transfers, we do a little bit of digging, we watch some youth players, we go to bed, eat, sleep, repeat. That's it. Don't Thank forget paracetamols because of WhatsApp. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To be yeah. fair, to be fair. <laughs> WhatsApp messages left, right, and centre. It's non stop. It's non stop. <laughs> Thank you very much, boys. Go and check out them players that everyone said. Top players, especially Jerome's one. Uh, by the end of the show, I'll get him to uh, repeat that name because he done it so well. Um, it's time for the eagerly awaited. The anticipation is mounting. It's the transfer roundup. Here we go. I'm going to get a little stopwatch. Today, we have... First up, Cole Lafferty has held talks with Regina since they've been promoted. Um, it looks like the talks are going very well. Looking into it, Regina fans are very happy about this. He had previous in Syria. Uh, I think he was at Palermo, I think he was at. Um, and he'd done pretty well there, was, a, was one of the fan favourites. And it looks like he could be heading back to Italy. Uh, Arsenal's Emmy Martinez has been offered a new contract. Although, although... 
he's not quite happy with all the conditions. Mm. We did a bit of digging from one of our scouts gave us the Emmy Martinez has been offered a new contract on 60k a week. Then from the other one of our scouts, he came back with a bit of information saying Emmy Martinez ain't happy with the contract. Boys, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this one. Emmy Martinez has done brilliantly for Arsenal mm. since um, since uh, Bern Leno has been injured. And too right for um, Mikel Arteta coming out afterwards and saying that there is no goal, there is no number one. Uh, you're fighting for your position, which it should be, because if you're doing that for every opposition, you should, every position, you should be doing it for your goalkeeper as well. Um, it's 60, 60 k a week. Do you think that's a fair fair amount, Simon? Do you think that's fair for Emmy Martinez? He's currently, on 20, wait, he's currently on 25 grand a week. Remember that as well. <laughs> yeah, he's currently, on, he's currently on 25. Yeah, fair enough, 60. 60 is good, but I'm going to defend him a bit here. He's not a number two goalkeeper. He's just not. <laughs> He is a number one goalkeeper. And if he can't get it to Arsenal, there's going to be plenty of teams that are snapping up for him. Mm. Everton have inquired about him. Everton actually want him. And I'm not surprised with Pickford. Uh, Sheffield United were looking at him as well. And even Leeds United are looking at him. So he's got his options. But and none, of, none of them surprise me. None of them surprise me. No, Henderson's, that's it. Henderson's going back to Man United. They're talking yep. about they're talking about him and De Gea fighting it toe to toe. Um, also, Chelsea want Henderson, so he won't be at Sheffield United next season. That's um, it. Leeds United's goalkeepers not very rated. Leeds need two goalkeepers. They've had mm. talked to Claudio Bravo, but they still want another number one goalkeeper or someone to challenge him. And Everton, they're not happy with Pickford. I mean, you just have to go through our. Uh, you just have to go, mate. You just have to go through our, our messages uh, on on a, on a Twitter page to see that Everton fans ain't happy with Pickford, and I didn't no, even know that not. was the case. Um, mm, no. do you, do you, do you think? Do you think sixty got sixty grand a week's fair? Do you think he's deserved of this new contract? What, what, what's the way to go? What would you do if you was Emmy? Ah, oh, so th- this is a very um, this is a very rare, interesting situation with Martinez. Um, what makes it so interesting is I think I think the financial situation that Arsenal are in. Arsenal obviously need to raise some money. And I don't think look, Martinez has done he's done more than he's done more than anyone expected since he's come into the team. Um I don't think Arsenal can have two pl- two goalkeepers like that on their books. Um if if you could get say north of twenty million for one of them. So I am. I might. Um, I, I. I don't think both of them will be at the club next season. I think Arsenal will have to sell one of these players to raise a bit of money, um, because just because of the financial, just because of the financial position they're in. I don't think you. I don't think you can afford to have a, to have a player like Martinez who could probably, because of his recent performances, he could he could probably get the club twenty million. Um, I don't think you can have have a fool to have a £20 million goalie sitting on your bench when you're struggling for money. Um, that's my view. Does he deserve 60 grand? He, he deserves everything. He, he's, been, he's been amazing. But, um, but yeah, I, I think he, him or Len, I, I think he'll probably go in the summer. OK, off the back of that, off the back of that response, yeah. Martinez or Leno for you then? Leno. If, I, mean, if, I was definitely, definitely, it, I was definitely talking to the Hat Man down there. <laughs> Sorry. I know, I know. If you, if you are, if you ask me right now, who, who would, who would I be more upset with leaving? I'd be more upset if Martinez left. Oh, okay. Now, now, does that mean that he's a? I think with Leno, you, you know what you're getting. You've seen him play for a, um, a couple of seasons. Um, he's obviously been a, he's been a number one for, you know quite a long time now with Martinez it's it's like the it's the unknown because he's only played a few games but what he's shown in those few games I think is he's got a lot of he's got ability um or he's got a lot of parts to his game that are better than Leno Mm. but it's but it's it would be a risk to get rid of Leno and keep Martinez would be a risk um but yeah so as I said at the beginning it's a very interesting situation and I, I think I think Arsenal are going to have to make a big decision with these goalies because just because of the money side of things. If Martinez left Arsenal for me, I won't be gutted. 
I won't be disappointed or upset because to me he's proven that he's not a number two goalkeeper. He is a number one goalkeeper because he is up there and fighting with Leno. But let's not forget what Leno's done for us since he's been here. He's had a shoddy defence in front of him. Everyone can go on about Allison and can go on about Edison. Look who they've got in their defence and look who Arsenal have got. Kieran Tini is our only one that I trust in defence. The rest of them, I couldn't trust them with anything. And Leno's got to deal with that. He's pulled off more saves, more shot stops. If it, everyone says it's Aubameyang's goals that have kept Arsenal out of that relegation, it's not. It's Leno's saves that have kept Arsenal where we are. Yes, Aubameyang's contributed to it with his goals, but Leno, for me, if Leno left and we had Martinez and another goalkeeper came in, I'd be worried. I think right. it's fantastic having Leno and Martinez fighting together. There's no number one goalkeeper. If you're performing, you stay in until you get until either an injury or this person's outperforming you when he gets his opportunity. It's competition. Yeah, yeah definitely. Let's not forget that Martinez has had that same defence in front of him as well. And, yeah, exactly. and, and he's also pulled off just as good a save as Leno. I mean, mm, if, yes. if, if anyone's seen that, that last minute save against Liverpool <laughs> or hasn't seen it, go and have a look because that... Watch today that, against Danny Welbeck. And, and, wow. and, and, and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, the, 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 the save that he made against Liverpool, which is the last shot, pretty much the last shot of the game, has not been given en more, enough highlights. It's not. It's not. I feel like if, if, this, was, if this was a bigger, bigger name player, there'd be... Be, if this was Alisson, they'd be rolling that out now. Mm. Steve, if, go on. If, if, if I was... It, you can't drop him now. You can't drop him until oh. he gets injured. No no way. You, you, can't, you can't drop him um, because then he will leave. He, and then Because if you take him away because he hasn't put a foot wrong. Um, asking the question about who, who would I rather have, I think it's... I've, <laughs> I wouldn't want any of, us, any of them to leave. And I think it's great that we've got two goalkeepers and we should just look at it, look at it like that. If, mm -hmm. if I was if I was a centre back, I'm just trying to which I've never played in that position, but if I was a centre back, I, I think I'd feel more safer at the moment with Martinez behind me. Because he he, he gives off this aura of strength, power. Mm. He never drops the ball. He's, he's, I think I think people underrate him. I really think people underrate how good this kid, how, how good Martinez is. Some of some um, of the comments that that came out, Steve, we, 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 from from people that didn't know Martinez were, well, he's been there for ten years. How good can he be? <laughs> this is just it's so, so, such a narrow-minded fault. Mm. It's, no. it's, it's, it's not. It, you, you got, do you not think if he's been there ten years, how good is he? Because they could well, have bought in someone else, they could have got rid of him multiple times, but still they kept yeah, him there. Yeah, I can't believe he ain't. I, I can't believe he ain't left. And mm. and, and and when we um, and when we did that little bit of digging between the between the four of us, and we, we come up with the fact that he he ain't happy with the sixty grand. Mm -hmm. Well, right, I tell you what, good on you, mate, because you got something to play with. Yeah, you know, because you because you you can. We, with what Allison's on, with what Edison's on, with what DA is on, you should not be on sixty grand a week because yeah. you're just as good. You've been just as good as them this season, you know, if not better. You know, I've not seen him put a foot wrong. Yeah, I've and the one thing I can say though with Leno, sorry, the one thing I will say with Leno, he likes competition. Leno likes competition. He don't. Goalkeepers he do. don't. He doesn't sulk. He doesn't go. Mm. Oh, I'm never mm. going to get a game. Why am I not going to get it? He likes competition, mm. and that's just the German, obviously, in him. But a German and Argentinian. What more can yeah. you ask? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I tell you, it's one thing. What, goalkeepers are a different animal. Yeah, one thing you don't do with goalkeepers is rotate them. One thing you don't do with goalkeepers is, when they're good form is swap them. That's mm. that, that's 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 suicide. Why? Because you've got a goalkeeper in good form, your other goalkeeper's hungry to get in goal. If you then drop that goalkeeper, you've sent a message to the goalkeeper you've dropped and you've sent a message to the other goalkeeper and they're both negative messages. It's whatever happens, he's number one and mm. he's lazy because he's, he's, only, he's only fighting himself. His only motivation is his self-motivation. There's no motivation mm. from the other player because he knows that he's not going to get that spot. 
And as soon as you've got that, it's dangerous. So um, I think Arteta's done the right thing in saying what he said. I think Emi Martinez deserves much more money. And I think that if I, if I was a defender or from what I'm watching, personally, I'm going for Emi Martinez. It, it's not because Leno's a great shot stopper. I, 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 yeah. I, but Emi Martinez, if you're talking about presence, you're talking about physical presence mm. in the box, you're talking about that, that split second thought process of a striker going in for him or not. I'm, you're mm. not going into Emi Martinez. Emi Martinez got two hench and had to drop weight. Mm. So that's why you saw Emi Martinez two, three seasons ago may have been a lumpy, heavy Martinez that looked a bit too wham. Now he's shredded that down and he's popping off saves in the top corners. And good good for him. Good for him for uh, turning around and saying he's not happy. And, and, and I think he should um, he should get more money. So uh, hopefully we uh, continue that competition. He keeps his good form. Uh, next up, we've got Jude Bellingham has officially signed for Busher Dortmund. Finally, how long did that take? We spoke about that about four weeks ago. Yeah. Four weeks ago in the Transfer Exchange show. We give the news before the news is the news. Yeah, Everyone has seen the announcement video. <laughs> yeah, anyone seen the announcement video, don't go and watch it now. Awful. I mean, they made a good effort. <laughs> good effort. But maybe they should have <laughs> muted it. They should have just <laughs> left the guitar and the singing. They could just play the guitar. Play a backing track. <laughs> never, never do that again. Just pops yeah. up. I never see it. I never see it. Oh, Steve, don't bother. It's lifeless. It's like, hey, dude. And they're just talking through it. It's, oh, it's, do, it's do, very... do you know what? Do you know what? I thought I was going to crack a joke there and say, oh, wouldn't it be what bad if they sung, hey, Jude? And they and actually I, do that. They did. Yeah. They sung, oh. hey, Jude. <laughs> Badly. Badly. <laughs> Uh, we had an exclusive oh. this week that Manchester City made contact with Real Madrid star Rafael Varane. Who gave me that? Steve, come on, hit us up. Tell us a little bit about, a bit, a little bit about the Varane deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Man City wants centre-backs and they want the best centre-back. Uh, yeah. And that's exactly the words how I was told. They want the best centre-back that's out there um, and, and that they will get him. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, Real Madrid is, again, another player who's not happy where he is. Um, I read a little article. Um, I can't believe he got away with it by saying, I mean, he was literally naming out, you know, uh, the Presidentes or whatever you call them upstairs. So maybe he did want it to get a... But yeah, Men City want the best. Rafael Varane's up there with the best, along with uh, Koulibaly, who um, Man City are still in talks with at this moment. Thank you very much, Steve. I tell you what, we speak, we spoke about Man City. We're going to keep tabs on them. Uh, like we said, they're off. They're not messing about. Uh, we 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 kind of were going with the idea that we're going to go for Nathan Aki slightly because he was probably too much money for the cent for the second centre back they were looking for. I heard that they were going to pay around 20 to 25 million for a, um, a second centre back, which is a lot. But apparently, they're willing to go to the 35 million mark that Bournemouth are asking for for Nathan Aki, which they are. Uh, they, uh, it, they mean business. They seriously, they seriously mean business. I'm going to talk about Man City in a bit, in a bit, in a bit, in a bit. Mm. Um, Arsenal submitted a 2 million euro bid for Swedish in Hammarby under 17 striker Elmer Robeck. I spoke about Elmer Robeck about. But in fact, I spoke about Elmer Ryback in my first episode of the Transfer Exchange show. Me on my camera, walking down the street on my way to work, um, speaking about Elmer Ryback. I really rate this kid. Um, he's strong, powerful, he's quick. He's got really good feet. Um, and Arsenal were put in a bid. Arsenal made made um, contact with Hammerby in December, I think it was. And it looks like they're actually going to go through with it. Please, please, Arsenal fans, young Arsenal fans, you seem to have this affiliation with if you bring in one player, who's going out? Arsenal by the 17 year old striker, who's leaving? Oh no, it's the end <laughs> for a Bamiang. Like, please <laughs> calm down, people. It's seriously annoying, yeah? Stop doing it. Just because Arsenal by the 17 year old striker, it doesn't mean that a Bamiang's leaving. Calm down. Uh, Juventus are potentially, potentially, 
I say potentially. They're, get, they're looking to get rid of Douglas Costa. Uh, Man City uh, links with him. Well, we don't know. We're going to have a look at it. We've got a couple of links there. So we're, 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 we're going to ask about uh, the Douglas Costa link. I don't think it's got anything in it because from what I know, we're going to speak about the player they're going to go. They're going after and in talks with soon. Um, but they're also looking to raise funds to look for a replacement for Gonzalo Higuain. Um, the replacement they want is Raul Jimenez of, of Wolves. It's going to cost them a hundred and something million. Wolves are not backing down on that price. So essentially any club that want him, they're trying to raise money to get him in. And there is a surprise team that's in after him, which will blow everyone away coming soon. Um, former Arsenal manager Unai Emery looks like he could potentially is set to take over at Villarreal. <laughs> Good luck, good luck, good luck, Emery. Yeah, you know I mean, no, no, no bad blood, no bad blood from any Arsenal fans. Good luck for your future. Villarreal is probably about um, a good team for you. So, good luck, good mm-hmm. luck. Um, West Ham youngster Benico Boya Biote is on his way to Bayern Munich after turning down a contract with West Ham. I spoke about this player a while back um, with regards to when we were speaking about players that didn't want to sign extensions on their deals to uh, play after um, the the in-between point from the end of the season, which meant to be the end of the season, to the actual end of the season now. Um, he refused to play. And I said, look, you're v- well within your right not to if once your contract's done. Um, he chose to do that. And he looks like he's on his way to, to Bayern Munich. So good luck to him. Uh, Chelsea have been linked with Atletico Madrid and Uruguay defender Jose Jimenez. Oh, we're going to have to step in here, boys. What a player. If Chelsea get him, seriously, they've got to be title contenders. If they can, if they can get him in there from after that come Madrid, surely they've got to be title contenders. What do you reckon, mm. Jerome? Um, they're, they're, they're going to be having the transfer, the transfer window from heaven. Like they're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're they're just snapping up all the good players. They, they don't care, do they? Um, they don't. They, they're, they're, I think they're going for it, aren't they? They're, they're on a mission, this this transfer window. Yeah, and, they are. Um, yeah, if they, if they sign him, then it's um, then they'll really be contenders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, another player they're after is Jan Olbeck from, from Atletico Madrid. But Atletico Madrid has slapped a €120 million Euro price tag on him. Wow, wow, wow. He's a top keeper. I really rate him. He's actually my favourite keeper at him and yeah, State. Yeah, I, I really like him. You talk about physical presence. You talk about aerial ability. You talk about everything you want in the keeper. Well, I'm talking about old school keepers and new school keepers. He's got it all. It's no wonder he's got 120 million price tag on him. But is he worth it? It's close to that. It's got to be close to that. But if Chelsea get him, it's another player. The serious, serious danger. Um, Bye, Kepa. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just not, he's not the guy. Chelsea's no. Brazilian winger, William, has rejected a third contract offer, which means the likelihood is he's on his way to either Tottenham or Arsenal. A while back, Richard Key said, he's Jose's man. Jose's had words and he's on his way to Chelsea, uh, on his way to Tottenham. But there's also been news that Arsenal have been in contact and he could be on his way to Arsenal. We don't know. But Simon, I know you had a bit of information about the contracts that he may have been offered um, and uh, the ones that he's turned down previously as well. Yeah, there were, there were rumours going around about the 2 250 that Arsenal were going to offer and something like that. And then I said, I asked this guy about that and he turned around and went, no. 250s. There's no such thing in 250. You're not getting, you're not giving Willian 250. No. But he's not bothered, Willian, about the wages. He just wants to stay in London. So Chelsea have offered him a two year deal, but he's like, he wants a three year deal. Tottenham can't afford to give him a three year deal. They've offered him a two year deal. Arsenal have offered him a three year deal, I think it is, and uh, the wages that he's happy with. So, as it stands at the minute, Arsenal are in the driving seat for him, but he's not the first option. So, if we can't get the first option, then they'll come back to Willian, who could be a B and could be a C. 
that's the, what they do in stages, basically. It's got nothing to do with, oh, if we get Europa League, it's not to do with that. You've got to convince the player to come to Arsenal, and that's what Arteta is having to do. But Arteta has stated multiple times that if he has to go into negotiations with a player on coming to Arsenal, it's already a bad start. And he doesn't want to do that. Mm. All right. Santi Cazorla is on his way to El Said and he's going to link up with his old mate, Xavi. What a man. What a mighty good man, old Santi Cazorla. Good luck on that one. Um, Juventus have made a bid for Atalanta striker Duvan Zapata. This, this, this guy's a player. Um, I, it, I, I thought potentially it was it, uh, as a, a, a an alternative to Raul Jimenez, but it looks like it's not. It looks like it, they still want Raul Jimenez, but they just want this guy as well. Um, Alfredo Morales has agreed personal terms with Lil. Steve, hit me up with this one. Yep, the, they have. Um, the uh, prolific Rangers striker, uh, 80 goals and assists in 96 games. Uh, an absolutely um, prolific goal scorer. He's, he's on his way to uh, Lille, which um, makes uh, a bit more sense about Jonathan David because he's been strong links this week. Of, well, not this week, today, that uh, he's going to be having talks on Monday with Leeds. Leeds United, up the Leeds. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Again, it, it just matches because he's, he's been signed and which leaves no room for Jonathan David now because he was a strong link towards Lille uh, last week and uh, obviously talks have broke down there mm-hmm. and uh, Leeds have jumped in, which would be a fantastic signing for Leeds, I think. I think it would be a very good signing for Leeds, a very, very mm. good signing. Mm. Um, pace, he drops deep to get the ball, takes on players. It's very raw. But uh, it, I think it's one of them players in the Premier League would suit him down to the ground. Um, mm. Sergio Romero wants out of Man United. Jerome, I know you're looking for this story. Yeah, so he's um, he's he's another goalkeeper. As you were saying, Leeds are looking for a couple of goalies, mm. and yeah, he's been quite heavily linked with Leeds recently. Um, I, you you could see it happening. You definitely could see it happening. You know, he's he's back up to. The, He's back up at the moment. He won't. He won't be the first choice for for United. He's got. He he would have a chance of being the first choice for Leeds. So yeah, um, yeah. You, you you could see that one happening. He's also been linked with Everton, but um, I think there's more chance of him going to Leeds than Everton. And mm. and and with the whole uh, Henderson debate, which is it's it's no secret. I mean, if you if you watch football, you know that it's always going to be a debate between the the Henderson or De Gea. Who's going to be the number one? Is he going to come mm. back? Now, if you're sitting there and you're Romeo, you're like you're like the, the lemon on a, the, the third yeah. third wheel on a date. You don't you don't want to be that, do you? So yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's time to go. Um, we 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 spoke earlier in the week about Kante potentially leaving uh, Chelsea at the right price. Um, I know Simon Simon used the one that, that told me about that one earlier in the week. Um, did you have anything on that? Yeah, that Chelsea have put Ingolo County up for sale, basically. Real Madrid have looked into him. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody that I told Kieran, basically, <laughs> on what's happened, I says I wasn't joking. I, actually, I wasn't joking. But Arsenal have inquired to Chelsea about him. Mm-hmm. And if you listen then, to what... They told, then they told him the price and they were like, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Can I just yeah. take an autograph? Can I just have an autograph? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. And then I said to this person, I goes, really? Arsenal? And he goes, believe it or not, yes. Arsenal have been in touch with Chelsea related to N'Golo Kante. And Kante has said it himself that he likes life in London. He likes... He's, he's settled in London mm-hmm. as it stands. And that... If he had to jump over, basically, to uh, Arsenal, he's got no issue with it, as long as he's playing week in and week out, and that he can see a clear, like not vision, but he can see a clear path to what he's going to be joining. Um, with Real Madrid, they they are also were interested, but the money for them, it's it's kind of a bit. They haven't got it at the minute. They need to mm. offload uh, James Rodriguez, Gareth Bale, etc. Mm. All that. Your Barcelona mix. have inquired about him and Barcelona this is quite funny this but if any Barcelona fans are watching this just qu- don't quote me on this but put something in the comments to say if you've heard it 
they want him to stay at Chelsea for another two years and then they'll buy him. <laughs> <laughs> <What's> the... <laughs> I laughed, I laughed when, he said, when he said that. Oh, we can't, we can't have you now. We can't have you now, but just stay there for two more years and we'll go take you. <laughs> yeah, when's, when's his contract run out? 2022, I reckon. It's, oh, it's class. Typical. Um, it is. Another, another one while you're there, Simon. I know there was a link in the sun yesterday where it said that Arsenal have drawn up a short list of players for if a Bammy Yang leaves. The short list of players was Maxim, uh, uh, the uh, sent, sent, what's his name? Sent Maximin. Yeah, so um, the, the, the list that the list they throw up, it's just like there's no source. There's no source. They just go, Arsenal oh, have drawn up a short list. Or did your mate just draw up a short list and pretend he was the Arsenal manager? Because it's got <laughs> St. Maximum from Newcastle. It had uh, Memphis to pie on it. And I was yeah. just like, I was Wilfred like, what? Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha. So sorry, come on, tell me about the Memphis to pie one, which you've already spoken to someone about, and he immediately shut it down. Immediately. Yep. So basically, I've seen a few people on Twitter and social media talk about Memphis and saying, oh, yeah. Arsenal are gonna are happy to pay the ninety million for him. That's ninety. <laughs> That's ninety million for him. Nonsense. Arteta wants him. Arteta really wants him. He wants him to replace Obama Young. Rubbish. Absolute crap. How Rubbish. do you journalists put food on this table? <laughs> Seriously, to come up with crap like that. He's a winger. I remember. Winger, I, remember, a I, remember He's a um, I remember last summer. Arsenal have only got 45 mil to spend. Oh, now we've got 30 mil to spend this summer. But if we win the FA Cup, it might give us 33 more pence. <laughs> <It's off. laughs> Seriously. How you lot can be journalists? Just get us on there. Just get us on there. We'll one feed day. your family. One we'll day. feed one your day. family. One day we'll be there. One day. Uh, one, what, one player was just about to talk about, Steve, uh, on the Man City front, Ferran Torres. Not just yeah. Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres has had talks with Man City. We, we spoke about that a couple, a couple of weeks ago. That, that's not news. We've got more news for you. It's not just Ferran Torres. They've got Sheikh Mansour yeah, and Peter important. Lim working together to make yeah. this deal happen. Steve, come on. Yep. They, they, um, they, they wanted the deal done. They wanted, they, wanted the, they wanted the deal done last week. Um, it's what... Um, Maguire told me they wanted it done last week and um, they've brought in Masur and Lim because they wasn't happy uh, whether the other guys have got the boot by now I don't know but they want to get this done uh, and they're looking at it being done next week um, along with Nathan Aki um, which you mentioned um, I mean I raised my eyebrows a little bit to that but um, you um you mentioned it about ten minutes ago, but yeah, Ferran Torres, great player. I mean, what what a what a signing he'll be for Man City. But they want him, they want it done, they want it done quick. And, and according to the person I spoke to, they, they've got to get him. Yeah, yeah, they are going to get him. He wants to, he wants to join. It, 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 it's very, it's very, it's very obvious. Yeah, um, Barley still in talks. Yeah, Kula Barley. You said he's still in talks. Um, yeah, uh, and and Napoli. Just remember, people. Koulibaly's going. Napoli have just spent 80 million on Victor Osserman. Where yeah. are they going to get that 80 million from? They're going to, they're <laughs> going to get that back from Koulibaly. You, it, it, God, that's how it works. It's a domino effect. It's how it works. You can't spend 80 million from nowhere. They've got to recoup yeah. some of that money back and they're looking for 60 million euros or 67 million euros for Koulibaly. He's on his way out. They're already looking for replacements in Gabriel Mejia's. And if they can't get him off, there was a couple of other players I know they've been linked with. Um, They'll be a scary run. team next year, then Man City. They, they, they will be terrifying. Yeah, oh. they, 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 they're coming back with a vengeance. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, I mean, he told me, oh, oh, same bloke, Man City um, uh, man said that Otto Mendy, he, he won't be playing for Man City next season. And mm. and he could potentially, potentially. Um, <laughs> Arsenal? No, 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 no. <laughs> Ra Real, Be Real Betis. Real Betis could be his potential destination. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've seen a couple of links there. Jerome, surprise one this week. We've seen Yaya Torre at Leighton Orient. <laughs> Talk about Come on, tell me about it, Jerome. So, yeah, so Orient are actually in the market for a new um, a new central midfielder. No, um, <laughs> there's, only, 
he's only there because he's, he's based in London at the moment and he, he needed somewhere to train. Um, he's going to be playing in Brazil. Um, oh, is he? Yeah, he's, he's had a couple of Brazilian teams after him. So I don't know what he's, what he's been doing in London, but that's just where he's, he's based recently. So, so he's, been tra- he's been training with the O's and um, yeah, that there'll, there's, there's not, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, could you there's imagine? Could you yeah, imagine? He would, he's still but, got it. Oh, he'd, he'd run it, wouldn't he? He'd, he'd run the game. <laughs> yeah. League two. Yeah, you're Tory in League two. He'd absolutely boss it. Yeah. Absolutely boss it. Um, yeah. Steve, can we have an Ozan Quebec update? I know you remember, I remember you saying that the Tottenham thing's gone a bit dry, but potentially mm. there could be more news with another team. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, there's, there's a few things I found out about him um, today. I mean, the first thing that just... You've, you've just got to keep going back to this because just the rumours won't go away with Spurs. Um, uh, and the thing is, they're still, they're still in talks with Spurs. Um, and I found out what the problems are. Um, you asked me last week and I was a bit up, up, up. I didn't know. Uh, but um, the fact is that they're looking for a replacement and Quebec's got a £50 million release clause. So you can imagine that with Spurs, can't you? And now I know why they talk about why it's taking so long. <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine, that, you know, um, Levy and these and these, um, you know, people, you know, uh, trying to get round his fifty million pound release calls. Uh, but, 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 Spurs fans, <laughs> unfortunately, even if you do get around the club um, um, thing, there is a. I was told today that Jurgen Klopp um, wants to buy us in Quebec. Off the back uh, of? Off the back of Cash plus Dave Rand Lovren. To, oh. And my poor Schalke friend, who if we all know very well, was literally not very happy about it, as you can probably understand. Um, um, I, off- I offered them David Luiz instead, but that didn't help. <laughs> but yes, David Lo- uh, Schalke want Lovren. Um, now they're talking about a deal with Quebec to go to Liverpool with Lovren and Cash as part of the deal to Schalke. Which could potentially scarp the deal for Lovren going to um, St. Uh, St. Petersburg. Yeah. Because there was a, I think an £11.5 million bid accepted from. And that was in him. build. That was in build as well. You know, mm. very reputable German um, publication as well. Yeah, another, another, another link. Yeah, which, which it's kind of Liverpool said they're not going to spend. We said Liverpool need to spend. Obviously, they've been watching the show because since then they're talking about spending. Jurgen Klopp's dropping little hints that he might spend. The Alcantara deals not going away, although they're trying to pay tuppence a bear. But there was a rumour the other day, it's been confirmed that if Liverpool's owners will give um, Jurgen Klopp the money, he wants to bring in Raul Jimenez from Wolves to Liverpool. But they ain't going to give him the money. They ain't giving him the money. But could you imagine that strike force with Raul Jimenez? But who would go? You'd have to sell one of them free. You'd have to. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't have all three of them up top. Raúl Jiménez, Salah, uh, Mane, because Raúl Jiménez isn't going to go to Liverpool to sit on the bench. It's not going to happen. And that was um, a bit of news that was dropped by Duncan Castles, the very well-known, very credible transfer expert. Um, Steve broke it earlier on. Jonathan Davids has been linked with Leeds. There's been there's been strong talks. Um, Hulk, Hulk could potentially be on his way back to Porto. We're not talking yeah. about the incredible Hulk. We're not talking no. about the green man. We're talking about <laughs> the tanned, <laughs> the tanned <laughs> Brazilian <laughs> Hulk. What's that? What's that? What's happening to these Brazilian names these days? Hulk, Fred. They used to be a bit more like uh, flashy, didn't they? I know, but to, to be Hello? fair, Hulk. Yeah. It's a bit I, more impressive than Fred. Uh, I want to be Ronald, Ronaldinho, <laughs> Ravelino, Jorginho. St- what happened to them? St- Stivino and <laughs> Jeromino. <laughs> yeah. And anyway. Simon. 
Just Simon. Back to, back to Just Simon. Yeah, well, Holt, for, for, for those who don't know, he's, he's over in China at the moment. He's 33 years old, 34 years old. And the rumours are, um, I found out this morning, that uh, he's coming back to Porto, from, you know, where he used to play for Porto in his uh, younger days, when, uh, when he was Baby Hulk. And, yeah, so... Yes, I mean, the links are strong. He's a goal-scoring machine. He's 34. Porto want him. I mean, he's absolutely... This, this guy, he's, he's, got, he's scored 220, 25 goals in 384 goals in his career. I mean, that That's is... not bad, is it? going, isn't it? It's <laughs> not but, bad. Uh, yeah, but with Porto, he's like the... He's like a... Do you remember when Thierry Omri went back to Arsenal? And it was this bit, you know, he was a hero. That's what Hulk is to Porto, you know. So, um, yeah, he's already had talks. Um, he's had enough of China. He's had enough of, uh, he's got enough money to to sort of set him up for life. So, yeah, Hulk coming back to Porto. Um, we also had um, Adam Lallana could potentially be on his way to Southampton. And also, another story to our ending is James Milner could also be on his way to to Leeds. I think Simon dropped that last week. So the double, the duo could potentially it's be... signed for Brighton, aren't he? Adam is Milana. He? Yeah, he's signed for Brighton. Is he signed? Yeah, he's signed. Ah, ah. Uh, it's our understanding that, that AC Milan have agreed personal terms with Mark Rocker. Mark Rocker was linked with Arsenal... Uh, said to be very high on um, uh, Mikel Arteta's wish list, but it looks like the relegated team have sold him for 20 million euros to AC Milan. Um, news on Declan Rice. Steve, you broke told me some news oh. on Declan Rice the other day. Oh. <laughs> huh? Did I? Don't, yeah, you did. I'm sure you what? did. Did I? <laughs> yeah. West Ham, West Ham contract, no, no contracts with this to Declan Rice. It weren't me. I don't rate him. Yeah, not offered. <laughs> a, not offered. A, yeah, no, he's not been offered a contract. Yeah, which is odd considering they're asking for yeah. eighty million for him. That's mm. right. They're not going to get eighty million. They've they've not offered him a contract yet, and there's this big sort of Ferrari going on at the moment at West Ham, um, and, he, and and the guy I don't know where it is. So maybe 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 they don't fancy him. Maybe boys mm. don't fancy him, maybe. <laughs> or, or maybe they need the money, and he's he's their biggest asset, and you know he was the one they can get a few quid for. I mean, what's he worth, Declan Rice? I mean, what? I don't know. Forty. I think I think we just met in the middle there, did we? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd say fifty. You got to add yeah. ten on because he's English. Played for England. It's 50. Versatile. Can play central midfield. Can play uh, centre-back. We've got mm. to say about 50 mil. You reckon? I'd say 50 mil for Declan Rice. Well, Zaha, Zaha apparently is going for 80. <laughs> yeah? Uh, yeah, that's Saeed, what Palace, that's what Palace said. <laughs> Saeed Ben Rama yeah. has had talks with West Ham. So, all this talk of He's a Chelsea man. He's Chelsea's man. Good luck. Well done for going to Chelsea. It's not the case. Um, he's still open to a move. How did Brentford get on today against Swansea? I know. Um, I, think, I think they were losing, weren't they? Yeah. That's, so that, 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 that's not good. That's not good. Um, <laughs> Raul Betis centre-back, Asim Mend, is, is being linked with Liverpool. I think I think you looked into that, Jerome, didn't you? Yeah, I, had, I did have a little look. He's... Um... He's quite a versatile defender, can play centre-back or right-back. He's coming into the last year of his contract. So, with Liverpool not having a lot of money to spend, um, he, he would just be someone, I think, that would be cover for them. That's all. Um, mm -hmm. he, he wouldn't go there to start games. I mean, they're, they're so strong in defence Liverpool. He, he would just, he'd just be going as, as backup, really. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely a possibility. Uh-huh. Um, Arsenal were linked with Jolis, Jolson uh, Fernandes earlier in the week. It was said that uh, the Kia Jerukin was on his way to to Porto uh, to uh, Portugal to to fresh out even contract talks or fresh out a deal with Arsenal in mind for an 18 million euro bid. It has come to light 
in early today that um, it's potentially could be signing a new deal with Sporting. Uh, these things happen in football. Sometimes clubs use other clubs to make things happen with regards to contracts. Sometimes mm. agents use other clubs to make uh, to get a new contract for a player. It's no surprise that uh, old Kia is involved in that one. So you don't need to watch that space many more, much more Arsenal fans. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the big one, Kai Havertz to Chelsea. Um, we gave you that news early. We gave you that news early. You didn't like the sound of it. You wanted to see pictures. You were asking for pictures. How are we going to give you pictures? Kai Havertz signed the contract at Chelsea. You think I'd be sitting in my living room if I could get pictures of Kai Havertz signing for Chelsea? <laughs> Use your brain, people. Timo Timo Werner's been done for ages, and he's only just got to Chelsea today. Thank you. Like, like what, what? Do you want the news early or not? Huh? Mm. Thank you. We prefer so the pe- we prefer the sizzle on this. <laughs> do you know what? By the time these new, these 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 uh, these deals actually get signed, and, and the players standing there in the t shirt with Sky Sports, I'm bored. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I knew about that ages ago. It's, it's not even news anymore. It's, it is honestly, what? Jude Bellingham, oh, he's finally signed for Dortmund. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Is, 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 is it brother or is someone else? Oh, oh no. Oh, it's the, actually Jude Bellingham. Yeah, that deal was done ages ago. And that's what it's like. Kai Havertz, if he doesn't join Chelsea, I'll be shocked. Genuinely shocked. Because it's all done. Because it's all done. So the, Lamp- the way Lampard's talking, where he's if, if a manager comes out and says, I expect Kai Havertz to join, whether we're in a Champions League or not, that's that's uh that's a manager who's saying that with confidence that the player's gonna be there. You you don't talk like that mm. if if you're not that confident or if you're worried about something else. That to yeah. me says that's a done deal. Yeah. Steve dropped uh, earlier this week, done deal. Simon dropped it earlier this week, done deal. We've given you contract numbers the lot. Yep. If you, if you mm. want the transfer fee, we'll give you that as well. But the deal is done and I fully expect it to be announced after all the European competitions are done because I feel like Chelsea have learned mm. and maybe by mm. maybe Kuzan had a word and said, show some respect when it comes to uh, announcing players because mm. we've still got to live with them. So, uh, yeah. All, all uh, they need now is a goalkeeper and a centre-back. And then dangerous. Oh, dear me. <laughs> dangerous. Sean, Sean Dice Sean Dice could be on his way to Crystal Palace. It looks like Roy Hodgson's time is done at Crystal Palace and uh, he's being earmarked as one of the players who could potentially take over. They were looking at Javi Garcia, but it looks like he could be going to uh, Valencia. Um, that's the former Watford boss. Oh, um, Steve dropped last week that Callum Wilson is... Uh, been linked to uh, Newcastle, and it looks like Tottenham. 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 Uh, are and the fans are not happy. <laughs> well, <laughs> really? Where do they? Yeah, the fans him? are. The fans are not happy. They don't want him apparently. Can you go? <sighs> as much as it pains me, I spoke to two Tottenham fans. As much as it pains me. And they said, no, we've got Harry Kane. We don't need him. It's like, yeah, but you need competition, though. Yeah, but that's... because no, Kane, Kane will be fine. He'll not get injured. He'll be fine. Yeah, but that's the problem. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of Man United are ready to hijack Napoli's bid for Brazilian Gabriel Magalhaes. No, Manchester United have just been told, asked to be kept informed of the, of the movements. Basically, they said, if letting everyone else do the negotiations, everything like that, said... Keep us posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Napoli are going to pay this and this. Um, do you know what? We're, we'll take that. We'll have a bit of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have him. And we'll bump up his wages by that much. Mm. Negotiations at Manchester United are pretty sloppy at the moment, which is why they're looking for a director of football, because of stuff like that. Um, Mario Balotelli, Steve, on his way to... Greece. Yeah. At, at, Genk, isn't it? If you could, if you can, if you can uh, pronounce this name like perfectly, there's a tenor in the post for you. Isis, Isis, Wrong word. Aris, Aris. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word used in my type neck of the woods. That is. Yeah, but the, the second name, Aris Vierlongkeri, <laughs> Vierlongkeri. 
Irish. That, that's that's what my dad used to say to me. He used to say, I'm going to kick you right up the Irish. You don't have <laughs> your room up. I wish we were going KK. Well, it looks like... It looks but like... Yes. But, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> go on, yeah, go on, we, Steve. The, um, the, <laughs> the Irish's chairman uh, has, has came out and said that uh, we have spoke and... Mm-hmm. Um, and Balotelli will be um, coming to um, his club. We're just wait. They're just waiting for Balotelli to put pen to paper, and he will be an Irish player. Um, but also, I found out today as well that um, another side has wanted him to play. Wanted him in that uh, third division uh, Italian side, Como. Oh yeah, Como. Um, they had uh, talks as well. I talks, uh, and he and obviously he's a free transfer. Uh, how the mighty have fallen. Mm. That's that's what the words that come to my mind when I think of no disrespect to Como, but Mario Balotelli, you know, Liverpool, Man City, for now third division side Como on a free transfer. It, 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 it yeah. says it all because this is a player who was uh, regarded as one of the best prospects in world football at one point, uh, mm-hmm. but obviously his attitude. His application um, and his ego were, were were too much for every single club he's been at to handle. Um, and a bit like Ravel Morrison, a bit like some of these other players, when will they grow up? Uh, probably when there's no clubs that want them and they and they miss the game. Um, <clears throat> I think that was it. Does anyone else have any? There's one more thing. Oh, whoa, 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 there's one more thing. Just yeah. As um as we're on air, um there's a there's a couple of reports. I don't know how um news. I know, I know um I... this is just for Pete Farrow fans, just to keep <laughs> you all up on the I don't think you can hear you, Jerome. I don't think okay. you can hear you, Jerome. I can't yeah. hear you, mate. Yeah, no, that's Jerome. I will cue you in, in a second, Steve. <laughs> Go on. So oh, oh, I don't sorry, know. I can't hear your word, sorry. <laughs> So I don't know how reliable I don't know how reliable these sources are, but it seems as though Upper Meccano signed a new contract with Leipzig. Okay, okay. Because um, obviously he's been he's been linked with a few clubs, but I, as I said, I don't know how reliable they are. But yeah, well, well, that's not surprising. That's that's one hundred percent not surprising. That's great work there, uh, Jerome. If that if that is the case, we're, we're looking to that. But um, it's not surprising yeah. because that's that was his first option. His first option was to sign a contract and move to Bayern Munich next year. Um, mm. Leipzig, Leipzig, no, they will get the, the right money or good money for him next season uh, from Bayern Munich. And there's just something about Germany. Once you have German, you stay German. That seems to be the the, the, the number one thing. Um, I think that was it for exclusives this week. I'm not sure we can handle any more. Yeah, the sign. No, no, see, go on, Peter Brower. What were you saying? <laughs> Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony. I, I, I can't wait to come off tonight so I could hear what Jerome's been saying all night long. <laughs> <laughs> He's like not rating him. It's gone silence for ages. And, and these, these two are just taking it. Yeah, so, so Jerome, if you can hear me and I've, I've gone into yours, it's because I can't, I, I can't hear you. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I just come just for Peterborough fans because we keep this thing going every week, so it'll only be fair just to keep you updated. Um, I came on here to, tonight just to sort of squash these um Scottish rumours with Celtic and Rangers, but but one of them is still in, and that is Celtic, and and the talks are still continuing, <clears throat> and the reason why they're still continuing is because. They want to put down five, six million, five and a half million, plus uh, they've agreed to put some add-ons on. But there's another but. I've been told by the person that I speak to regularly on the Peter Burra, Ivan Tony um, transfer um, is speculation, and he's told me that a championship club has um, put a bid in, and it's been accepted. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I did a bit more digging after that and it's, this is probably putting my head on the line it's, it seems to be Brentford who's, oh, okay. who's wow. done it okay. 
Steve, sometimes so, you've got to, sometimes you've got to stick your neck out, mate. Don't mm. take risks. You don't win I'm the prize, mate. What I, but again, i have looking at the team they've got, and it don't make a lot of sense. But apparently, the person who I've who's told me, I I trust pretty well. You know, so yeah, it's meant it's supposed to be Brentford, but that's that's not that's not out there. So it'd be, we'll have to see if it comes off. All right, I hope you lot had a pen and a pad tonight because the amount of exclusives that we dropped to you was unbelievable. It was like a it was like a it was like a compilation album track list, one to fifty of transfers. Yeah, there was other people's transfers in there, but when there are transfers. We always give it the old exclusive. We always always point to one of the guys. Boys, give me some updates. I thought you had. That's an exclusive from the Transfer Exchange Show. Last thing I want to say tonight, yeah. Big love for Big Sue. Um, one of our other scouts, um, Simon Mank, very good friend. Um, he's part of our team. Uh, he does a lot behind the scenes with regards to doing the scouting speaking to sources, giving us advice. Um, he's always given me advice with this kind of thing uh, because he's done it before. Always, always eager to help us out. Um, he'll always be a part of this team. Um, he's sadly lost his, his, his mum over a long battle uh, yesterday. And um, we want to say big love to Big Sue and obviously big love to uh, Simon because... Uh, it, it, it hit us. It hit us hard as well, mate. So, mm. um, so we're, we're always here for you. So just give us a shout. We'll make um, you laugh. Munch and glum back. And, and if and if and if anything, <laughs> I'll I'll listen to your jacker rants for about five minutes before I stick you on mute again. <laughs> 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 and on that note, I'd like to say a big thank you to the man at the top. He's got to enjoy this one because I'm going to... There we go. He's got to enjoy this one because I'm going to move him down the bottom next time. It's not fair. I'm going to add Jerome next to me next time because I feel like he feels a bit lost in that bottom left-hand corner every week. Yeah. <laughs> big, sh big shout out to the chef, though. Thank you very much today. Obviously, big shout out to the chief scout down the bottom right. It's Steve K. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Lovely. And remember... It's only football. <laughs> and, and Steve, just before you talk, I'm going to cue in Jerome and, and say, get him to say goodbye. So don't, don't <laughs> jump in. And obviously, it's, our, it's the marksman down the bottom. It's Jerome Marks. Thank you very much, Jerome. Nice one, Kieran. Thanks, boys. No worries. Cheers, no worries. Guys. He said nice one. Thanks, boys. <laughs> Once again, I, I want to give a little shout out to <laughs> some of the people um, who oh, good win, good win. Don't think I've not seen you there, mate. Don't think I've not seen you there. Thank you for the support. Uh, we're getting a, we're getting a few new fans coming in. Uh, good win's one of the one who always drops a comment. He he's asking us about when's the next show on. Uh, another one was uh, what's his name, Carlo Magnifico. I think his name was. Um, we're getting to know you boys, so don't think we don't appreciate all the comments you put in. We'll always reply, even to some of the um, people that want to talk trash. I'm always happy to put you in your place. I don't mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give it a couple of slaps on the wrist. Get a bit of attitude adjustment. But it's all good. It's all love. Um, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for showing your support. Thank you for all the sources as well, because if it weren't for you, we'd just be looking through the paper and guessing. Um, so peace out. Stay 